In this video, I'll show you a super cheap but powerful streaming PC build, a 12 core 24 thread Xeon for only $170. Over the last few years, China has innovated in the areas of repurposing Intel server hardware. These CPUs and other hardware usually get discarded by data centers when their upgrade cycle comes up. The Chinese market is constantly flooded with these CPUs and other still very usable tech. The prices and innovation are a sign of just how much enterprise level e-waste is sitting out there. As a result, not too long ago, a lot of obscure Chinese consumer-grade motherboards started popping up online. Amongst them were those with socket compatibility for these older Xeon server chips. You can find a lot of these motherboards on Chinese websites like AliExpress and even eBay. This is my fourth build using this chip and motherboard combo, and I have yet to regret it. The first thought you probably have is how good can these chips be if they're really less than $10? The answer is really good. The $8.23 Xeon E5 2670V3, for example, is a 12 core 24 thread beast when it comes to stream encoding. It has a 30 megabyte cache and clocks at 3.1 gigahertz boost speed. While it seemingly only supports DDR4 speeds of 2133 mega transfers on this board max, it still has plenty of power to monitor and encode in high quality on OBS over a gigabit network. So without further delay, let me show you how this works. First, we need to grab a compatible motherboard. I use this particular vendor on AliExpress. This is my third motherboard from them and it arrived in nine days. This motherboard usually is under $40. Mine was $36, $50.75 with shipping. I did test this machinist board here, but I wasn't satisfied with the stability. There were a lot of crashing and weird stuttering. The Yajia X99 is a compact motherboard with everything you need. NVMe support, SSD support, PCIe 3, USB 3, and cheap cooler support. This comes brand new in the box, and what a nice box it is. We're going to put our $8.23 Xeon CPU on this board, coupled with 16 gigs of DDR4-3600 I got on eBay for $16. We'll cool it with a new ID Cooling SE914 XT, a $27.40 Amazon purchase. Windows 10 will get installed on this new $10 Mushkin 256 gig SSD. For power, we bought a new $37.61 Thermaltake Smart 500 supply, which is plenty for this setup. Lastly, I'm dropping in an old Nvidia GTX 670 that went for $21 on eBay, but you can use something even cheaper. Our grand total for this build, $170.99. I don't need a case, I'm using this green piece of plexi and that works great. So we put all of this together and fire it up. Most of the settings in the BIOS we just ignore. We set it to UEFI for our Windows 10 install. Once installed from the USB stick, we simply install the chipset drivers, the audio drivers, and the Nvidia GPU drivers and the Windows load is complete aside several minutes of Windows updates, that is. Before we go on to the next part, I wanna make sure that you understand this video assumes you already know how to use OBS, creating inputs and display captures and game captures and such. Just wanna make that a point. Let's move on. Next, it's time to grab a copy of OBS and get that installed, version 30 preferably. Then we'll need OBS NDI and its runtime. I'll put the links in the description below. The easiest way I found was to install NDI and launch OBS. It'll tell you that NDI runtime is required and will provide a link in the error box. Click that link, download and install the runtime, reboot the computer and we can now launch OBS. On the gaming slash host PC, we wanna have the same version of OBS, NDI and the NDI runtime that we have on the Xeon streaming box. Now in OBS on the gaming PC, go to tools and choose NDI output settings. Click the tick box labeled main output and type a familiar name for your host PC. Hit okay and that part is set for now. 
Now, back on the Xeon box, go to OBS in the Sources section, click the plus sign, and choose NDI Sources. Click OK to create a new NDI source. In the first dropdown, we should see that gaming PC familiar name created listed in there. If not, make sure OBS is on on both PCs. Also, make sure your firewall isn't blocking it. Now, below Source Name, where it says Bandwidth, choose Highest. Below that, Audio Video Sync will choose Source Timing. Check the Allow Hardware Acceleration in the middle box there. And make sure Latency Mode is set to Normal and Safe. Click OK, and you're ready for that. This video is mainly to show the power of this cheap setup, so I'm not going into every OBS setting. There are tons of YouTube videos on OBS NDI out there for you to search through. So with the Xeon box set to record input and the gaming slash host PC set up to broadcast, we're ready to try it out. First, we're going to start with 1080p 60 frames per second at a bitrate of 12,500 kilobits per second. The audio is at 256 and the quality as high as it goes. Here are a couple games we tested. As you can see, Cyberpunk, no lag whatsoever through the benchmark. The gaming PC and the streaming PC are in perfect sync. The temperatures are absolutely wonderful. And you can see the CPU usage on the gaming PC is pretty much 1% or below at all times. On the Xeon, hovers around 50%, so not that bad at all. The easy peasy stream life. And you can see in the PUBG deathmatch, we are doing just great. The quality just pretty much as high as it is on the gaming PC, almost discernible and smooth as butter. So I made this video to prove you don't need a super recent CPU at the center of your build to create a powerful streaming PC. Options are out there if you're willing to mix new and used components and try some of these hacky innovations. This build can also be used for other purposes like video editing, which it does quite well. It can be utilized as a home server, entertainment PC, even as a middle tier gaming PC, believe it or not. So if you're looking for a cheap quality streaming solution or just wanna build out something cheap and powerful, this setup can be a viable option. So thank you so much for watching. Be sure to hit like and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos where we do some weird stuff to this chip and board. Grab the Nutella, honey. This has been Trollbender. I love you people.